Welcome to ECW Heatwave 2006. After six months of Cyberslam episodes, we have finally made it to the pay-per-view live from the Stabler Arena in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. For a video package promoting the match card for the night, Joey Styles and Taz open the show, continuing to hype up the crowd. They are quickly cut off by C.W. Anderson and Stevie Richards, however, who look to intimidate the announcers. Joey Styles quickly and probably smartly gets out of there. Steve Carino soon joins his stablemates in the ring, telling Taz to leave or Terry Funk won't be the only person to have their career ended tonight. He adds that Taz would struggle to call the rest of the card with a broken neck, but at least Joey Styles wouldn't have to carry his dead weight throughout the rest of the show. Taz stands firm until the music of Terry Funk hits. With a smirk on his face, Taz looks more than happy for Funk to take it from here. That leads straight into the opening match of the night, a bull rope match between Steve Carino and Terry Funk. They brawl all around the ringside area in a decent match with good heat, but Steve Carino eventually has too much for Terry Funk, choking him out with a rope around his neck before hitting a pile driver to the corner of a table. The King of Pro Wrestling picking up a victory with a solid 52 rating. Punk struggling. Apparently, he's not suited to the brawl base match. That's news to me, but it doesn't matter. After the match, Steve Carino is clearly feeling the effects of Funk's offence, but refuses to allow the referee to remove the rope. Instead, he wraps it around the face of the hardcore icon, presenting his prize catch to the audience. The commentator said that they hoped this wouldn't be the last we'd see of Terry Funk in ECW, but looking at the state he was in, they couldn't be so sure. Out of that, we go into what had been scheduled as the opener for the pay-per-view, the ECW World Tag Team Championship match between the Havana Pitbulls and Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid. The match with probably the youngest average age of all the matches at Heatwave. That hopefully showed in the pace and the energy of the match. It's an okay D rating, four average performances from all four men, hard hitting both sides looking to bring the intensity, but the Havana Pitbulls make the first defence of their ECW World Tag Team titles, pinning Trent Acid after a Cuban missile crash. Crisis. Ricky and Rocky stand tall after the match, the first of three hustle matches on the night, and they've got off to the perfect start. We then go into a Paul Heyman interview, and ratings-wise, this is more like what we need and what we expect, of course, from Paul Heyman. He shouts out the performance of the Havana Pitbulls in the prior match before turning his attention to Tommy Dreamer. He accepts that people may be surprised that he's accepted the challenge of Tommy Dreamer, but they don't realise that Paul Heyman always has a plan. As he says that, the two heads of his personal security team walk into the shot. The chief of ECW then talks about his new vision of ECW being realised tonight, but says that he has some personal business to deal with before he can sit back and enjoy the show. He adds that he didn't want it to come to this, but Tommy Dreamer has left him with no choice. After their match tonight, Paul Heyman will have put the heart and soul of ECW down for good. He feigns sadness at this before reminding Tommy Dreamer, you asked for this. We then get a video package, a poor video package, using whatever available footage we have of Mama Sazaki and Masato Tanaka, just trying to hype up their clash up next. A debut and a return in the third match of the night for two FMW alumni. They're sent out to do their match. They know their style better than anybody in ECW possibly could, so they go out just to do their thing, bringing their style to the wider ECW audience. Not much heat to the match, unfortunately, but decent wrestling. An okay match, especially when you consider that it's an 18 rating from the virtually unknown in the tri state, Mammoth Sasaki. An impressive 64 from Masato Tanaka. He, of course, has a huge following from his original run in ECW, and he picks up the victory in just over 15 minutes. Out of that match, we go into the second interview of the night with Tommy Dreamer ahead of his must-win match against Paul Heyman. Dreamer is emotional and nervous and accepts that tonight could be the last time he ever walks into an ECW rink. But if Paul Heyman wants to keep him down, he's going to have to make sure that Dreamer isn't breathing. As long as Tommy's heart is beating, he will keep fighting. Six months ago, the company that he loves was resurrected from the ashes, and having fought alongside Paul Heyman to get ECW back, there's no way he can have it taken away from him again. Heyman can bring his security team, he can bring the hustle, he can bring anybody that he wants, because Dreamer has to beat Paul Heyman, and the alternative is too dark to think about. Dreamer struggling there when going off script, which is a shame for the final hype before the match, 
but hopefully a classic ECW video package can bring it back up. The story, of course, beginning on the first episode of ECW Cyberslam as the originals were attacked by the group, which would later become known as The Hustle. Of course, it was revealed that Paul Heyman was behind the group and had directed most of their actions, including them ending the career of the Sandman. This was done in the name of a new vision of the new ECW, a vision that Tommy Dreamer was told he had no part of. In fact, Dreamer was used as a symbol of a bygone era, even being barred from Cyberslam by Paul Heyman. Eventually, Dreamer challenged Paul Heyman to a one-on-one match at Heatwave, a challenge which was very surprisingly accepted. There was one condition, however. If Paul Heyman beat Tommy Dreamer, then Dreamer would be fired from ECW. Into the fourth match of the night, it's a poor rated match, but with Paul Heyman in the ring, that's not a surprise. It's more of an extended storyline segment, really, with a game of cat and mouse starting proceedings. Tommy Dreamer would eventually get his hands on Heyman, but unsure of what to do first, he was so hyped up, he was hit with a low blow from Paul Heyman. Heyman then tried to escape again, this time through the crowd, only to be stopped when the music of the Sandman hit. The man whose career we thought was over grabbed Paul Heyman, dragging him back to the ring, only to be jumped himself by the personal security team. Those two men took out the Sandman and joined Paul Heyman in the ring. Now a three-on-one situation, things went from bad to worse for Tommy Dreamer when a third helmet-wearing man joined the ring. Dreamer was now surrounded, only for the third man to hand Dreamer a steel chair. The third man then joined Tommy Dreamer in fighting off the two members of Heyman's personal security team. Paul Heyman couldn't believe what he was seeing and was hit with a DDT from the third man. Dreamer completely baffled as Heyman laid out on the canvas, but was then hit with a DDT of his own. The man then dragged Tommy Dreamer over Paul Heyman with the referee counting the 1-2-3. With both men out as the bell rings, the mystery man extends his arms in a familiar pose. A lot of people will have caught on by now, but he removes his helmet. Raven! Raven is back in ECW. Why he's returned to ECW and why he saved the career of Tommy Dreamer is unknown. And as he rolls out the ring, it becomes clear that we will not be getting answers tonight. Moving out of the shocking return, we get back-to-back -back separate promos from Rob Van Dam and CM Punk, the champion and challenger in tonight's main event. Originally allies, recent weeks have seen a wedge driven between the two as RVD reiterates during his promo his mistrust of CM Punk. Punk refuses to entertain any questions about potential allegiances to any group in ECW, saying that he made it to ECW on his own, he became the TV champion on his own, and tonight he will become the ECW world champion on his own. Into the third last match, a fairly straightforward contest and the first of the night entirely contested within the four ropes. A decisive win for Loki, no outside involvement, he's just better than Brent Albright at this point. This does in some way mark the end of Brent Albright's singles push. He's not been good enough despite a decent 49 in this match. Loki is still a couple of levels ahead. We now need to rework Albright a bit, hopefully he can come back strong again, but at least for now, he'll be going on the back burner. Continuing a successful night for the hustle, Loki is joined in the ring by Xavier and Sonny Siaki. They stand over Brent Albright. Those two may be wanting in on the action. However, before anything else can happen, Sabu comes down to the ring with a steel chair. Sabu takes out both Xavier and Sonny Siaki, with Loki getting out of there and heading to the back. Sabu looks every bit of the maniac that he is often portrayed as and refuses to wait any longer before getting his hands on Homicide. The semi-main event is a violent all-out brawl between Sabu and the Hustle leader Homicide. A great night for the Hustle so far, but there would be no clean sweep for them. A better than expected 54C- rating, with both men rated on their hardcore ability. Two fairly evenly matched performances, the fans apparently not happy with the overbooking of the match, which is pretty strange, but an Arabian skull crusher through a table gives Sabu a huge victory. The commentators put over after the match that Sabu looked like a man possessed throughout the night. He stands tall, having successfully stopped a hustle clean sweep on the night. Homicide had spoke before the match about showing the ECW originals exactly what the new ECW was all about, but Sabu had just given him a lesson in what ECW really stands for. Out of that we get a quick, pretty crap, filler buffer 
you know, in-between segment with Elijah Burke bringing out his girlfriend to show her off to the audience. Shelly Martin has thankfully cuts this short, bringing Kevin Furtick out to the ring. Burke is quick enough to get him and his girlfriend to safety, but Johnny Swinger takes a chokeslam from Furtick. Again, a pointless segment, but we needed females on the show or we'd get the penalty at the end of the show, and it just breaks up the action between the last two matches. Before that main event, we do get a video package looking at the accomplishments of the ECW TV champion CM Punk and the ECW world champion Rob Van Dam, the two best win-loss records in ECW since the company came back. There is no two better competitors to be in the main event of our first pay-per-view than these two, and we go into the ECW world championship match. It gets a 72 B-, minus. I'm really happy with that. I did have high expectations going into this match and we have definitely met them. A 74 for CM Punk, a 70 for Rob Van Dam. It is RVD who picks up the victory, however. No outside involvement in the match. Despite the hustle threatening their presence in the build-up, CM Punk proved to be a man of his word. He wanted a fair fight and he gets it. The experience, however, of Rob Van Dam gives him the edge in just over 20 minutes as he hits a five-star frog splash to Punk. A great, great main event, but the action is not done there. As Rob Van Dam celebrates his victory, CM Punk brings himself back up with the help of the corner. He sits in the corner as the two champions of ECW are given their titles, the match clearly bringing a mutual respect out from each of them towards one another. Joey Styles and Taz put over just how evenly matched they were as RVD shows respect to CM Punk from across the ring. Rob Van Dam then began to walk over to the defeated challenger, only for the lights in the arena to go out. When they returned... RVD was taken down by a hooded man, the familiar call of gore, 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 making it clear what we were seeing. Returning to his feet, the hood came down to reveal another return, this time it's Rhino. Punk then stumbled forwards out of the corner looking to help Van Damme, only to walk straight into another gore. Both main event competitors down on the canvas, Rhino picked up the ECW Television Championship and then the ECW World Title, raising them in the air to end Heatwave 2006. So a C+, plus, a 67 rating, our best show so far, increasing our popularity in 45 regions, as well as being the most attended ECW show since the company returned. Despite up and down ratings, it's a very, very good show, and more importantly, after six months of build to Heatwave, we have a fresh start. Rhino and Raven are back in ECW, Tommy Dreamer is going nowhere, RVD is still the ECW World Champion, and where we go from here, we'll find out on next week's ECW Cyberslam.